this is my tasty niger our very first international edition we have left the comforts of the united kingdom and we've flown over to the gulf to the united arab emirates and this restaurant is described or has been described by some as the plushest african restaurant in the gulf we're in dubai in each dubai and it is my tasty niger come along with us My brother, Ndip. Abana. <laughs> Let's language. start from there. Sure. Um, so we came into the Gulf about a week ago. We were doing some other things. And we've always said, whenever we are going to come to the Gulf, particularly Dubai, yeah. Inish was going to be the first place Thank you. We'll, we'll visit. So it's a pleasure to be sitting here with you, Same here. my brother. Thank so you so much. For the formality, introduce yourself. Let's get away over there. Let's meet you. Thank you so much for visiting Enish and putting Enish as one of your destinations. Absolute pleasure. My name is Glenn Rambe. I'm from Zimbabwe. And I'm the general manager for Enish. In... Being with Enish from the time it opened, yes. And when was that? 2020, in March to be precise. Okay, so it's like a fourth year anniversary. Four years, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are planning an anniversary, but we'll do it after Ramadan, you know. Exactly. I I'm going to come to Ramadan as well, but um, let's talk a bit more about the establishment. Um, how would you describe Enish? Is it a Nigerian restaurant in Dubai? Is it an African restaurant in Dubai? Or is it just a beautiful restaurant in Dubai? What is the slant? Okay, the thing is, Enish, it started off in London. Yes. Being a Nigerian restaurant. Yes. And it came to Dubai being a Nigerian restaurant. Okay. But we've realized that Dubai is a big market yes. with all people from all you know across the world mm -hmm. so it was going to be too mean for us to just focus on nigerian market i like the way so, you put it yeah <laughs> too mean yeah too mean <laughs> so we said let's go pan african okay but still maintaining the nigerian because we need to align with other restaurants because Absolutely. we become a global Indeed, yeah. restaurant yeah so we're now a pan african brand mm. yeah and would you describe it as the leading pan african brand in dubai oh yes in the Gulf? I'm telling you, we are the brand representative of African image. We're the face of Africa to say we're the leading brand. When you, come, when you start talking about Africa, be it food, be it culture, be it music, we're the leading brand. Many would wonder in the Middle East, how can an African restaurant thrive in the Middle East? What is the secret? Or is it just that easy? I can't say it's easy, but I think uh, from the vision of the chairman, Mr. Shola, mm -hmm. he realized that you need to be original. Because mm. many times when African people, uh, this is what I've seen, when they go abroad, they want to change their identity. They don't want to be associated with their roots. But we've realized that this is the secret to succeed. Mm. Be original. And you realize so many people start appreciating you. So many people when they move to the to to to, to, to I mean overseas abroad like here in the Middle East, mm -hmm. there's certain things that they really miss about home. Mm. The food itself. Networking as Africans on their own, which is what we are trying to bring mm -hmm. to Middle East, yes. And through that we've succeeded in bring people here. We have so many things that we do that bring Africans together. Mm. And uh, yeah, that has been our basis for building a strong brand in, in the Middle East. I was speaking with you earlier. I was asking you if this was New York, mm -hmm. where would you describe Inish as being in Dubai, in New York? Because um, we have the Inish brand in London. It's a nice bridge, yeah. very up market. It's off Oxford Street, very up market. It's in Covent Garden. That's like bang in the middle of central London. Mm -hmm. And if it was in America, if it was in New York, it'd be like Manhattan. So what does this area represent, this particular location for the flagship restaurant, what does it represent in Dubai? Where is it? Um, I think I would go with Manhattan in the New York. Yes. Okay, fine. I might not be very acquainted with the American environment, mm -hmm. but I've, through what I've read, I think Manhattan would be the Yes, yeah, that, that would be Because it. where we are right now, mm -hmm. number one, we're in the H Hotel. Okay. This property is owned by the Sheikh of UAE. Oh, the Sheikh himself. Yes. And the founder 
of UAE is called Sheikh Zayed. Yes. So we are a number one Sheikh Zayed. Number one. Number one. The address is yes. number one Sheikh Zayed. Just, just like saying 10 Downing Street somewhere. Yes. You know yes, yes. But this is number one Sheikh Zayed. And we're close to the majestic Dubai Mall. Okay. Burj Khalifa. Who, whenever someone visits Dubai, they would come around this area. Indeed. So it's a catchment area for business. Everyone is driven to this area. And just across the road, we have uh, the DIFC, Dubai International Financial Center. Indeed. Yes. So this is the business hub of Dubai. And you can tell from the rentals. I can't disclose the rentals, but it's, I'm telling you. No, trust me. It, the test of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> you can yeah. see it already from, uh, from not just even just all the establishments within this, yeah. you know, this building itself says a lot. I'm telling you, yes. And um, funny enough, we've come during Ramadan. And I've just realized in the last seven days that Ramadan is such a special season here for many reasons. Correct. What's business like during Ramadan in the middle, in the Gulf? and particularly in Dubai and for the business? Um, I've been here for some time. Okay. And I've seen changes when it comes to the way the Ramadan you know, policy has been applied. Mm -hmm. When I came here, it was hard to operate during Ramadan. You mm -hmm. would, they were, all restaurants would be closed, totally closed. They would only open after Easter time, around 6. But then with time, things are changing. Now we're allowed to trade, sell food, but not alcohol. Mm -hmm. Alcohol comes after 6 p.m., after after time. But mm -hmm. during the day now, we can still serve food now. People are allowed to eat, but as long as they are inside the building. So business of like, this, this is barely talking about this year, it has really improved. Mm -hmm. The numbers have actually doubled um, compared to the previous Ramadan periods. We, are, we can't complain. At least we are surviving, we are making money. Um, unlike the last 10 years, I'm telling you, it was so a sad, sad environment. Mm -hmm. I was in Qatar a few days ago and and um, I was going out. I just thought, okay, I'll skip breakfast, you know, and eat in town. And I got out and realized I couldn't buy food. I said, Ramadan, no. So the rules, are, the rules vary from country to country, city to city. Would you describe Dubai as perhaps the, 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 the um, what's the word, the leanest in terms of um, Ramadan rules from, 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 uh, from an African or global perspective? Yeah, I think I'm very fortunate enough that uh, I've traveled. I've been to Qatar itself, I've been to Saudi Arabia, I've been to Oman. Mm -hmm. For some reasons, Dubai is relaxing conditions. And I'm sure this is actually to the, you know, to the, can I say, to the betterment of the investors' environment. Because mm -hmm. in Qatar, it's totally out. Business is closed. They're still, like in the 10 years back in Dubai, yeah. that's, that's where they're still operating in but when you come to Dubai they have relaxed conditions they are allowing business to operate in, which is good for the investors I don't know why they're doing this I don't know whether they're they are following different policies as Muslims you know Muslim mm -hmm. country GCC country but I don't know where it's coming from but I, as a business owner or business operator this is the best news I, I want to hear about Dubai besides Ramadan Dubai has been ahead of everyone else in terms of applying themselves when it comes to improving the environment for the investors. But the rest of the Gulf are chasing though. Yeah, they're chasing, they're coming after Dubai. So I'm sure they're seeing the light, <laughs> if I can say. One of the, one of the biggest decisions or, that came out of the United Arab Emirates in the recent past was the banning of 20 African countries, apparently 49 in total across the world, but mm -hmm. predominantly 20 African countries. Um, how has that affected social life and business in the, U in, the, in, in the UAE? Has that affected Inish in any way? 100%. We've suffered a huge blow. That's a huge blow because our market, much as we are trying to also tap into the Western market, mm -hmm. we still need our African market because they are the best supporters to our business. Mm -hmm. So talk about Nigerians. I've seen it, I've compared Nigerians are the best spenders. I is that right? I'm thinking, <laughs> I can't take this away from They like outgoing life, mm -hmm. night life. So we've really suffered a big blow. Mm. And we're just praying that, you know, they lift these bands. Because they are varying from country to country with mm -hmm. their own reasons, yeah. But our number, our number one spenders are Nigerians. But just because Enish has actually established itself as a strong brand, we've mm -hmm. managed to survive. We're still making good money to survive mm -hmm. as a brand and still expand. Mm -hmm. But to. Given a choice that all these bands are lifted, I'm telling you, we'll be trebling whatever we're doing. 
And this is not just the only one, you have another one in Dubai as well. Yeah, yeah, in the downtown. In the downtown. Downtown by Enish. Okay, so yeah. we have one up market. Yes. And we have one in the downtown. Downtown, yes. Okay, what are the, what's the difference in the flavors? Uh, that one in the downtown, we're trying to capture the Western people, the Americans, because they come to the downtown to see the majestic, you know, center of town. Yeah, yeah, yes. Bang, yeah, yeah. Yes, and behind that, there's a popular restaurant, you know, um, hotel called the Palace. Yes. So most people, they, you know, the tourists, they come to that area. So we, you find that when you go there, it's 50-50. It's a fusion of the African cuisine and the Western cuisine. Mm -hmm. We're trying to cater for okay. both worlds, yeah. Mm. So that's one that's different, but it's still Enish. It's Enish, The yeah. flair, the environment, the, you know, the, um, what do you call it? Even the music that we play there, mm. still the same. When you go there, you still feel like you're in Africa. Floyd Mayweather was here. And it was not only well, Floyd Mayweather. No, no, yeah, I was coming to there, but <laughs> what was that like? Because we saw the pictures amazing. and the videos. It was amazing. Because once we posted on Facebook that Floyd Mayweather in Enish tonight, yes. that alone... Managing, managing how did you manage that? Um, basically, when they come here, Mr. Shola is well connected. Yes. He knows these people. Mm -hmm. So I think he gets, you know, their consent exactly. to announce their, you know, their presence. presence yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So once you do just a one message, people just flock here to see the play, to see the person, to see, you know, these uh, celebrities. Mm. And it's good business for us. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. So I know you've had um, Floyd. Who else? AJ was here as well. Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Okay. Davido has been here several times. Okay. Talking about. Um, I know DJ Amunai. Copy has been here as well. DJ Copy was here, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. She's she's kind of like our brand, brand ambassador. Brand ambassador, so yeah, yeah. She yeah, loves yeah. this place. She's yeah. done some videos here as well, yeah. Awesome. Diamond Platinum has been here as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So quite a number of That's them. That's my brother from Tanzania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So you see, we are trying to encompass everyone from Africa. We're not just in Nigeria, in Africa, like I said. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are the representatives of Africa in the Middle East. The face of Africa is Enish. Okay. So what next for Enish in the Gulf? Um, see, the Gulf, it's a tricky environment. Much okay. as it is a good environment. For and alluring and everything. Yeah, yeah. But because of some of the countries, like we were just talking about other countries with regards to their policies, yes. we need to be very careful on which other country to invest in. But when it comes to security, we are safe. So, we never know. We could be opening Saudi, because they are making a lot of noise. We are monitoring the situation. Doha. So, yeah, Doha. Yeah, those two use, you know, you know what? <laughs> Doha and Saudi. Yes. Our next target. Mm. So, yeah, for Middle East. Doha just, um, 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 Qatar just spent 200 billion on a World Cup. Um, that, that's a lot of noise. A lot of noise. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. They did make a lot of noise. They're trying to get also investors, but they need to, a lot, to improve a lot on their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And also, they like some of their policies, like I'm saying, this is not what we want. Mm. You know, Africans, we are people who like to go out, you know, networking with other people, socialize, have, you know, enjoy this nightlife. Indeed. But some of these countries, you know, the rules are so prohibitive. I can imagine. So you can't make money. Mm. But would you say, um, because if you look at the Middle East and what we heard about the Middle East from outside of the Middle East yeah. 20, 30 years ago, I'm sure you said they've made a, been able to successfully tweak and create a blend of their culture in order to accommodate people from outside and make it work. And the UAE, particularly Dubai, seems to be at the, at the front of that, of that journey. 100%. They're trying to accommodate people now. Again, mm -hmm. that's the word to use. They're mm -hmm. trying to accommodate people from other countries, from other religions, mm -hmm. so that you know they create that conducive environment for social life, mm -hmm. yeah. for business as well. Yeah. And Dubai, like I say, they are at the forefront. They are leading the pack. And the rest of the world, they are now following, which is very good for us. Otherwise, no 10 complaints. years, 20, 14 years back, it was a different board game again as well here in Dubai itself. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so we've had another of you talking. Let's see what Dubai is all about from the kitchen. 100%. Yes. I'm ready to Let's get all out. post you.
You buy a niche, no waste time. Oh. Everything in quick time. On spot. Yes, sir. And of course, of course I, I see your Pan-African thing here. Take us through the, 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 the spread. Basically, we are trying to represent every region of the continent. Yes. Starting from the middle. The middle. That's Nyamachoma. Yes. Ugali. Ugali. Kachumbari. Sukumawiki. So, Ugali, for those who don't know where that, what is Ugali? Ugali, actually, it's a cornstarch. Cornstarch? Yes. From the maize. Yes. Dried maize, you dry it, then you grind it, it comes like your gari. Well, no, even our two shinkafa. Yes. So shinkafa is, is two, there's either rice or maize. So yes. similar in a way, yeah. Exactly. Okay? So you boil your water, then you add your powder, then you stir and make it simmer. Okay. And then that's it. It's delicious. I love this one. Yes, I eat this every day of my life because I grew up eating this. I love this. And this is a uh, yamachoma. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, watch out for the My Tasty Niger African Meat Special. So we have Nyamachoma from the east. I know it's Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. Where exactly can we zone it down to? Nyamachoma, it's a Swahili. Swahili. Shape. So, so the region. It becomes Kenyan. A Kenyan. Most of Swahili is Kenyan. But the eastern, yeah, eastern part of Africa, they are trying to make Swahili, uh, what do you call it? It's almost it's a universal yeah, thing universal in that region. language yeah. for Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. Yeah. So Nyamachoma, yeah, it's Swahili. But now, if you take the same Nyamachoma down to South Africa, we have it. We, it just changes the name. Okay. In Same Zimbabwe. flavors? Yeah, in Zimbabwe we call it gochi gochi. Okay. Gochi gochi. Yes. <laughs> so watch out for the meat special. Gochi gochi from South Africa, Yamachoma from East Africa. We're going to be having suya. We're going to be having um, ntaba from Congo. Yeah. We're going to be having Ghanaian suya. That's going to be interesting. Watch out. I'm telling you, African cuisines are very rich. Yes, so, and, and this... That's sukuma wiki. Sukuma wiki. This is kale leaves. Kale? Kale leaves, yeah. Very popular these days, yeah. Also amazing. So, and we have it as a mix with this yeah, as well. That's how it goes. The package like this. Awesome. So let's switch to the right. The swallows. Okay, that's your right side. To me, that's my left side. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Here we have our pounded yam. This is common for you guys. I yes. love this one as well. Yes, sir. Because it's so soft. It's easy mm. to swallow. Yeah. I don't have to chew it. <laughs> and this is our eforiro. Eforiro. So it comes in different, uh, you know, with different protein depending mm. with your choice. This okay. is beef eforiro. Okay. Yeah. So it goes together with this. You can also go have pounded yam with chicken eforiro, it's up to you. Fish okay. eforiro, it's up to you. Yeah. Or egusi, which Another is Another delicacy from the West. Mm. Yeah. Next, we have our egusi. So today I made you assorted meat. Assorted meat. So it's coming with eba? Eba. Okay. Still, you can still have it with... No, we're going to flip flop everything. Yeah. <laughs> Just indulge. Test Indeed. and see which one matches which soup. Okay. Good. So also from the West. Yes. Good. And to your right, yeah, this is a controversy section now because mm -hmm. that thing you are looking at there mm -hmm. is that Ghanaian, Nigerian, Sierra Leonean, Gambian, or Senegalese jollof. I'm telling you, I've had an issue. I've all chefs from these countries we've just mentioned here, yes, and we've done a, a sample with we, we bringing people from outside to test. We didn't tell them which one is this one for. Okay. They just gave us their own views that this is the best. And we went for, we settled for the Nigerian. You, so it won the competition. This is Nigerian. You heard from the horse's mouth. They have chefs from across Africa. Mm -hmm. And they all sat down. And by the time everybody tasted, they decided that one was their favorite. The Nigerian one. The Nigerian jollof rice. I'll yeah. say no more. Continue. I, I'm, I'm a neutral person. I'm from yes. Zimbabwe. Yes, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be biased towards any country yet. No. Nigerian jollof rice, I'm telling you, even if you keep it in your chiller for three days, when you warm it up, it still maintains the flavor. I love this one. Okay. Then we have our grilled tilapia yeah, so. with fried yam. It goes with the coslo and the sauce for the yam. Ooh, okay. This is a short stopper. This one? I'm telling you. Okay. It's a full meal for me. If I have this one in the afternoon, I don't take dinner. That's it. It's the next it. day. Yeah, I'm telling you. This one with the grilled tilapia is like, oh my God, I can't wait to taste this one. The, 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 um, the grilled fish thing is a quite popular across most restaurants, African restaurants, sure. you know. The Ghanaians have their version, the Zimbabweans have their first, South Africans have their versions, you know. And typically it will be the fish, some salad, some sauce, yeah. typically yam or maybe even cassava is even getting popular as well, you know. Yeah. And what also makes it special is actually the plating, you know, the branded fish plating. I like that. Because we, we are now a global brand yes. to maintain a certain standard. 
Mm -hmm. I love it also this way. Awesome. Because and you know, people they eat with their eyes. All the time, yes. So if the eyes approves whatever is in the presentation, then everything the mouth else follows. Watering, yeah. And last but not the least, our pop pop, pop there. Wow, that one. Everyone who comes here, they will remember us because of this pop up. Because we give this as a compliment. We don't charge people for this. You don't charge for this. No. It's just a compliment. While they're waiting for their food, but I know it's sweet. So people they expect to come at the end of the meal. But no, 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 here we give them as while they're waiting. I'm telling you, and they love it. Oh. And they quickly eat it. Then they, can you please have some more, please? <laughs> and I think you have the right size as well. Yeah. Because it just kind of like rolls into your mind the one. I'm telling you, you don't awesome. have to open your mouth that wide. It just slides in your mouth and chew and goes. So we've gone through the meals. I just have one more question for you. Sure, sir. And in terms of spreading the gospel, mm -hmm. you need to expand. What are your expansion plans? So far, we're in the UK. Okay. We're in Asia here in Dubai. Yes. We'll be spreading our wings to Texas. Okay. And Houston. USA. Yeah. As we speak right now, the chairman is in Kenya. Okay. Looking. That's Mr. Shola. He's looking for a site. So we'll be having very soon Africa represented. Mm -hmm. Because let's say charity begins at, at home. Indeed. But for us, we started from abroad. Yes. Because we wanted to tell the story of Africa to those people. Diaspora back home. Yes. yes. Diaspora back home. So yeah, we'll be having a representation in Africa, in Kenya. We'll be having a representation in uh, New York. I mean, uh, Texas. Texas, yeah. Already we're here in Dubai. Yes. Asia. And then we have the UK. Europe. Lockdown. Yeah. The UK is fully locked down. 11, fully locked down. 11, 11. Inish, Inish branches. So UK is the global HQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the global <laughs> HQ for sure. Because now we've become a global brand. And we're still spreading our wings. Like Indeed. I said, even in the Middle East, there's still some more opportunities. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. The brand is growing. Um, Glenn, my brother, I'd like to thank you for a fantastic evening out. And the evening is just starting. It's still young. It's still young, so yeah. Thank you very much. And I think um, it's time we're talking. Maybe so. For sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Let's do that. For dropping also. by. And thank you so much for giving us this platform to share My with you. My taste in Niger. Join us. It's all open, guys. Hi. Come and feast with us. Yeah. Mm, tasty. It is. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 yeah. Kettles of Enish Dubai. Yes. This is for Oga Director. Oga Director. And this is for Mama Toby. Mama Toby. Please don't mix the two. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so it's much. It's been a pleasure, my Same here. Nice one. Otila. Otila. <laughs> If you enjoyed today's edition of My Tasty Niger, remember to subscribe, like, and share.